Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to hack your PlayStation Classic using BleemSync version 1.0. So, great news, version 1.0 is out, it's extremely stable. In all fairness, the old versions were very stable as well, but this has a lot of extra features, you know, in terms of easily adding games, being able to power your PlayStation Classic via a USB port on your computer, for example, and that allows it, you know, to be easier to add games. I'm going to show you all of that cool stuff. Okay, first thing you want to do is make sure you've got a USB stick connected to your computer. You want to go to a web browser, not open up Spotify the way I did, and then you want to go to the website modmyclassic.com forward slash sync. I'm going to provide a link to everything that you need. And then from here, if you scroll down and click this where to download this BlimSync 1.0.0, I'm going to cancel it just because I've already got it downloaded. And if you go to the directory where you downloaded it, right click the zip, go to extract all, click extract. Once this has extracted, we can start the process of adding the files and hacking our PlayStation Classic. So almost done now, almost done. Few more seconds and then we'll be good to go. Taking a bit of time, so there's a bunch of really small files. That's all it is. This was taking so long, but again, once you've done, you know, the pro, the steps in this video to set up, outside of adding games, which is really simple, you only have to do the one. So it's not much of a problem. Okay, so if you go to this folder, there's two folders. You want to copy them. So copy them. Go to your computer. Make sure you have a USB stick connected, so you will need a USB stick to be able to hack your PlayStation Classic. Right click your USB stick, go to Format, select FAT32. We'll be reformatting it afterwards to XFAT, or you can use NTFS, but we need FAT32 for the initial hack. Make sure the volume label is titled Sony. Click Start, click OK, and let's just wait for this to hack it. I mean, to format it, we're not in the hacking stage. That's all done. Open up the drive, paste this over here. So again, just <laughs> gotta wait just under a minute for this to copy all the files over. Once you've done it, once that's it, it is done then so it is just the initial process so this hack is really really cool it allows you to add games using a ui on your computer so you don't have to constantly be unplugging the usb stick from your playstation classic plugging it into your computer you know copying the files over using you know terminal or command prompt commands unplugging the usb stick plugging it back into your console but making sure the power cable is out then plugging that in it's just a lot easier because it was pretty, you know, decent initially considering that hack came out really, really fast. This is just a lot better now. And the steps that we're doing in this video will actually future proof you for other versions of BleemSync as well. So it'll be a lot easier to upgrade. That's partly why the developers have, you know, you know, added a couple of extra steps that we are going to be doing to make sure when you upgrade to different versions of Bleem Sync from version 1.0 in the future, it is just in general easier. So again, if we just be patient about this, it will copy all of our files over. Now actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna switch over to the PlayStation Classic so make sure you wait for all of this to copy over to your 
USB stick because I don't want to really you know waste any more of your time. Unplug the USB stick. So you know, make sure you safely eject it. Don't do it yet because obviously I'm copying something over. And but once it's copied over, safely eject it. Unplug the USB stick. Go to your PlayStation Classic, and I will see you there now. So now that we are on our PlayStation Classic, you want to make sure the power is disconnected from the classic. Get your USB stick, plug it into port two, grab hold of the power, make sure the controller's plugged in as well into port one, plug it in, wait for the LED to come on. And once that comes on, just press the power button. It's gonna show you the screen now. I've just muted the audio. Okay, so if this is the first time doing it for you, which it isn't for me, what will happen is you will get a little sort of, you know, before the screen, little notification saying that it is going to turn off and restart. That is fine. That is part of the process. So actually what would happen for you at this stage is the console would essentially be in a sort of turned off state. And what you wanna do is just um, plug the power, grab a hold of the USB stick, and now go back to your computer, plug it back in, and we'll continue on the computer now. And now we're back on our computer. What you wanna do is open up the USB stick that you've connected back up copy these three folders so you'll get an extra folder now so copy this and just create a new folder and call it whatever you want on the call it bleem sync backup and now in here just paste these three folders so paste them here because it's reading shouldn't hopefully take very long to copy the files from the computer i mean from the usb stick onto your computer and once this is done, the next step is to actually format the USB stick again. But instead of FAT32, we're going to use a superior format such as XFAT or NTFS. And it supports both of them, the console does now. So that is absolutely fantastic. So this is almost done. So once this is done, because this is literally just the backup, we're going to need this in a moment. I will, I'll actually close it down for a second. Go to your computer right click your usb stick go to format and you want to go to file system you can select ntfs or xfat xfat is the recommended one select that make sure the volume label is sony click start click ok once that is done open it up open up your bleem sync backup copy these three folders and it's gonna copy them onto the USB stick. Then we will go back to the PlayStation Classic. But what's awesome is the initial step where we formatted the as FAT32 and we plugged it in, that essentially added a payload to our PlayStation Classic. What, it, what that payload allows us to do is connect the PlayStation Classic's you know, power cable, not just into you know a a war plug i've actually been connecting it to a playstation 4 that that actually works which i think is pretty darn cool but we can connect to our pc not only is that awesome because there are, there's many of you that have your playstation classic next to the pc but also we can connect it to the pc directly instead of having to constantly unplug and plug the usb stick to add games we can just use an interface which i'll be showing you very very soon so this is almost done now, and then we'll be switching over to the PlayStation Classic. So just a few more seconds, and then we are done. Okay, we are done. Obviously, just make sure you safely eject your USB stick and unplug it. Go back to your PlayStation Classic, and I'll see you then. Okay, so now on the PlayStation Classic, again, make sure the power cable is disconnected. 
plug your USB stick in as we did before. But this time, instead of using the regular power cable that I use, I'm going to use another one that I've got here. And this is connected to my computer. So connect it to your computer. Just bear in mind, you don't have to have it connected to your computer after you've added the games. This is just an easy way of adding games. So connect this cable up. Wait for the power LED to come on. It is on. Click the power button. I'm going to show you the interface. So it says Sony Interactive Entertainment. And what we want to do is just wait for the menu selection, which will load. It doesn't take long. And there we go. We have the selection between RetroArch and the Bleem Sync. So the Bleem Sync will take us to the conventional menu, the carousel that has all of the 20 existing games, the you know the built-in games, and any games that we add, which we'll be doing you know literally in the next step. RetroArch allows you to play PlayStation 1 games, but a bunch of other emulated games as well, like PSP, SNES, NES, N64. There's a whole heap of stuff you can do in RetroArch. So we're done for this little part here. So now what you want to do is just go to your computer, leave the PlayStation Classic powered on, plugged into your computer's US, you know, B, USB. Yeah, yeah, see, it's USB. <laughs> USB port it is only at this stage only you know this menu where you can have it plugged into your computer to be able to add games so don't go beyond this stage so let's go back to our computer so we are finally there we are at the stage where we've hacked our PlayStation Classic we've got it connected to our computer and I'm going to show you how easy it actually is to add games now so if you go to your browser Go to a new tab. Pretty much any browser will work for this. I read online that Internet Explorer won't recommend Chrome in general. Anyway, Chrome, Firefox, that sort of thing. And type in BleemSync UI.com. I'll provide a link to it. Click enter. Take a few seconds to load. As you can see, it's waiting for it's showing the IP address. This has actually not connected to a website, but locally connected to our PlayStation Classic which is connected via USB cable to our PC so now what you want to do is we can add games but before we do that I want to show you a couple of settings go to PlayStation Classic in system preferences you can change stuff here there's a few cool things you can change stuff like the field of view that sort of stuff and the near and far clipping planes this stuff I recommend that you leave as it is unless you really know what you're doing. Same with the file paths for you know the data for the BIOS files. If you really want to modify it, it's all here. But what we're interested in is the Bleem Sync preferences. So there's a few preferences here, and the ones that we really are interested in are these. I would say use runtime logs so that way if anything goes wrong, you're you know essentially write to a tech file on your USB stick which you could plug back into your PC and you know see what's happened so the next few options I'll quickly go over what they do if true then clear downloads on each boot up that's fine and if true dumps will re dump on boot regards to flag again this is to do with the logs but this if true dynamically links eMMC games on top of USB game what this means is it allows you to have the games that we will manually add but it allows you to have the 20 games that are built in on the interface as well. So that is really, really cool because before the problem was in older versions, you could either have the USB stick connected and have your games, or you could have it unplugged and have their games. And frankly, there are some games on there that are, you know, <laughs> want to play. Next is if true, you'll essentially order it in alphabetical order the eMMC, basically the built-in games and your games. So what that essentially means is all the games will just be treated as if they're just games that are on the system and they'll just be all in order, which is really, really cool. So if true, then RetroArch is the emulator of stock UI. So if this is true, then RetroArch is the emulator for the stock UI. And what that means, if you go into BleemSync, 
and you click X on one of, you know, you select one of your games, instead of it trying to emulate it via the PlayStation Classic emulation, it will emulate it via RetroArch, even though you've booted it up from your regular carousel interface. I recommend selecting this simply because the certain games that has better performance like this. The other thing is you get all of the features that RetroArch provides, such as game shark codes and the extra customization, but you still allow you to use the Bleem Sync UI, which is cool. So toggle Bleem Sync splash screen and custom splash screen. Again, I'm gonna leave that as default. You can enable quick boot, which just you know removes the Sony animation splash screen. This can help boot, make it boot a little faster. So if you want that speed from being off to you know being able for you to be able to play a game, this is what you want to select. Disables health warning. Again, help boot it up a bit quicker. But I'm not fussed about that. So I'm leaving these two, you know, as off. But you can customize that. And here we go. So if you want to boot directly into the carousel, and you don't want to go to that menu select where it shows RetroArch and Bleem Sync select this one if you want to directly boot into retro you don't want to deal with the stock carousel ui that's fine select this one but i want that option so i'm going to have this one selected by default everything else we can leave click save so now to add games go to games manage and click add new game click choose files and i've got Crash Bandicoot on the desktop in a folder. You need to select the bin and queue files, click open. If you wait a couple of seconds, you'll fetch the cover art, the name, uh, you know, the sorting name, the release date, and the replay developer zone, and the publisher as well, which is really, really good. It just does it all for us. Click add game, and we just need to wait for it to basically copy the game over via the USB cable that has been plugged into our computer going to go through that and go on to the usb stick in the playstation classic so this is a lot more elegant than having to constantly unplug the usb stick plug it into our computer then you know get the games open up command prompt or terminal some sort of interface like that navigate to the directory you know run you know copy the files over run a certain bleed sync executable which basically updated the database this interface right here does all of that it's still you know essentially doing all that but it's behind the scenes and that's what we want we want an easy to use interface that makes it easy for us to add games and depending obviously on the size of your game this will be a little faster or a little slower crash bandicoot the original one is one of the you know larger games so for that reason it's taking a little bit longer than you know some other games might so we just gotta wait a few more seconds or so and then we'll actually be able to play the playstation classic games almost there but i am really excited to show you the playstation classic being hacked with version 1.0 of bleem sync that is absolutely amazing that we got version 1.0 it wasn't long ago that the playstation hack i mean playstation classic actually launched we got hacks really quickly we have version 0 0.3 then version 0 0.4 and they work really well as well but version 1.0 is phenomenal i've been testing it out for a little bit of, for a little bit now and it is just amazing so almost there it is almost there and you will you can stop listening to me just blabbering on. So, just gotta wait a few more seconds. Okay, and we're done. If you wanna add a new game, click add new game, go through the same process, simple as that. So now, we are going to switch to the PlayStation Classic and I'm going to show you the games or the game working. So, see you on the PlayStation Classic. So we can now test our newly added game on our PlayStation Classic. Obviously, you can add as many as you want. I've still got the power connected to my PC. You can connect it directly to the wall now after you've added the game. 
to connect it to the PC is only required for you know adding new games. So we can select any interface. We can select RetroArch or BleemSync. RetroArch obviously has all of the features. I'm just going to select BleemSync, click X, and I'm going to turn the volume back on. And now we have all the games that are built in, but we also have Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot is not available on any of the systems. So you can see I've added a custom game. One thing to bear in mind, the rest of the game may be different just because depending on what region you bought your PlayStation Classic in, the built-in games vary. Okay, so now if I just click X, Crash Bandicoot now will launch. And the regular sort of controls on your PlayStation Classic for going back to use a second, going back to the PlayStation Classic menu all work fine. So I'm just gonna get into the game, just quickly play it and just you know show you you work it. So skip that. I'll watch this impression. So if we click start game and Sanity Beach and you'll see me play the first level of Crash Bandicoot and you'll see how awesome I am at Crash Bandicoot. So I'm just going to go through these boxes, I usually wouldn't, I hate it when people do. You've got to jump on them 10 times and get the 10 Wumpa fruit again, not 10 apples. I don't like it when people say apples as well, they are Wumpa fruit. You know they look like apples. So it's quickly this one, it be a little quicker than the other ones. But you're going to see me play the first level, and not only play the first level, see me get all boxes, therefore get the gem as well. Let me just quickly show you through this. Okay, here we go. This is a little bit now. So I'm going to ignore those boxes. I will come back in a second for all of them. Oh shit. There we go. Did I get all of them? It would appear I missed just this one and we need to go back round there is a turtle over here I think there might be another turtle coming up nope so I can go here and collect the boxes that I missed as you can see I have all the boxes now there's actually just one box at the end but that is an easy one and that's by the you know the end point so if i go to the end point there we go select that one box boom that's how you play crash bandicoot the first level you get the gem and as you can see crash bandicoot is very happy Okay, so obviously I could save at this point. One thing I just want to show before I end this video is if you press start, I mean select and start. Sorry, I mean select and triangle. It takes you to the PlayStation, you know, this secret menu. You can exit it. You can change stuff here as well. So if I click exit, it is circle, not X. And this takes you back to the Bleem Sync menu. So that's it. It's that simple to hack your PlayStation Classic and play games. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message and I will assist you. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next awesome video.